back for a final few questions. Andrew, Chantel, Bruce, and Rex are all at the table. And the question we mentioned is the most overrated politician. Who was it? Uh, Stephen Harper, uh, for an unusual reason. He's not overrated because he won a majority. That is a really good performance. And he's not overrated that he's you know, doing a long, long run here, two or three elections. That's great. He's overrated by his enemies. Uh, those people who conjure him up as some sort of cross between Genghis Khan and Mussolini are really giving him too much scope. He doesn't have the power that they think he has. He hasn't got the depths of animus against all the rest of the world that he's painted as. Those who are most radically against him have created some sort of superhuman politician that will wipe out Canadian life. It's grotesquely overrated. Interesting <laughs> argument. I'll have to do more on that at some yeah, point. Sometimes. Bruce. Well, I think the position of government house leader has historically been a position of considerable importance for a government. And the decision by the Prime Minister to put Peter Van Loan in that role, I think, is something that is a bit mystifying. He's, He's back in that role. Back too. He in used that to role. have it. And you, can, had a you can understand then. the argument in a minority parliament uh, where that kind of bare knuckle skirmishing is something that you almost have to do in order to get through. Uh, but in a majority situation, it really doesn't make that much sense. And I think he's adding to his reputation as a relentless partisan defending most recently the uh, the dirty tricks in Erwin Kotler's writing I think he's uh, I think it's a problem for the government Andrew we've beaten up on him a little bit already but Brian Topp uh, and he may prove us all wrong he may prove to be a brilliant if he wins the leadership but oh, well, that's next year's story. it's extraordinary <laughs> by that time everyone will have forgotten uh, except for videotape uh, I do think we make the error oftentimes in Canadian politics of undervaluing the importance of experience experience in elected office experience there's no experience I suppose that can really prepare you to be a party leader it's a different occupational category than anything else in politics but the notion that because he'd had experience in the back room that he could just step into this job and the fact that so many senior people in NDP suddenly subscribe to that, I think they may rue that. He has not, to date, shown himself to be a particularly appealing uh, political figure. John Tom. I second that, but I picked uh, Gilles Duceppe, uh, and not only because he brought his party down to four seats and couldn't keep a fortress that was his own seat, but because suddenly he's emerged in the polls as the next Quebec Premier, the savior of the Parti Québécois, and you have to wonder, I mean, how, how, what do you have to do before people decide you may be a spent force? <laughs> uh, maybe he looks at Bourassa and sees what happened to him. I mean, Bourassa is now spinning in his grave hearing you because he has <laughs> never brought any party to, to that level, oh, but, but they, uh, although he failed to win seats. 76, yeah. Yeah, but he pretty he, long got wiped he, out he, and disappeared. He, he did leave a party standing on its feet. I went mm -hmm. to the Black Leadership uh, afternoon last uh, Sunday. I was awake. Uh, and there were so few people left, it's as if, you know, people died over the life of the Bluck and there weren't <laughs> enough relatives left to have a good party at the funeral. And the really crushing thing is he was supposed to be the Bluck's ace in the hole, their big, big, big asset. Yep. And nothing. Yeah, he was always being, being praised in the debates as the greatest debater, which was mm -hmm. a great mystery to me, next only to the incarnation. All right. Who to watch for in 2012? Bruce. Well, I think Bob Ray is probably the name that comes to mind for me. I think the question of what happens to the Liberals in the NDP is the biggest single question in the political landscape. And uh, the Liberals have had such a tendency to uh, uh, hand ring over their leadership choices uh, for many years now. Uh, if they continue that, I think it's going to be a problem for them. Um, how they can resolve it, I think, is a question for the, you know, the higher ups in the Liberal Party to work through. It's not going to be easy, but he's doing a pretty good job, it seems to me. Andrew. I think it's going to be very interesting to see whether Danielle Smith and the Wild Rose Alliance can break through in Alberta. They've gone down a bit in the polls since the choice of Allison Redford as uh, Tory leader. The, the Tories are getting a bounce. But if you looked at the turnout in that the Tory leadership race, it was way, way low. And it did not indicate a lot of enthusiasm in the, those party ranks. If the Wild Rose Alliance can pull this off and if Danielle Smith can become the premier, this is a new template, for, particularly for female political leaders, of not climbing the, the pole of the, of the traditional party elites, but going out and, and essentially starting your own party. Uh, that's exciting, and she will be absolutely one to watch, I think, instantly for the federal politics as well. Chantal. I'll watch Alberta too, but also British Columbia, Alison Redford, and Christy Clark, because I'm curious to see if uh, a major province will elect a woman finally at the table, and there are two of them. Redford will go first. Uh, Clark doesn't have to go for a while. And in the same spirit, I'll watch Mr. Legault. 
new party, right. <laughs> no greasy bowl, and see where we are a year from now. In right. Quebec, Quebec uh, politics, always fascinating, bound to be in the next year. Rex, you get the last uh, word to Yeah, I'd go on the ne one to watch next year is Thomas Mulcair, whether if he wins uh, the NDP leadership, watch to see if he can actually do it, if he can meld Quebec and the rest of the country, and if he doesn't win it, uh, going only on stories of temperament and other things, whether he will remain a, a, an accommodating figure within the NDP party or whether he will try to take the Quebec caucus and make it a separate one. So Mulcair is interesting either way the dice turns. Now, leadership races are always fascinating after they're yeah. finished to see who plays uh, on which side of which team when it's all done. And Mulcair, of course, has played on a number of teams yes, he already. Has. All right, we thank you all. A reminder, next week, the much-anticipated year-end quiz where the veteran at issue panel goes up against those, <laughs> those rookies, the insiders, with some fun yet challenging questions on the political year gone by. You won't want to miss that. There's Still, a hmm? There's a rookie here too. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll keep that in mind. It won't get you any extra points.